Hello everyone! Welcome to the TB's Adventures. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Okay, I'm gonna check a couple of things just in case to make sure that everything's working. Ah! Okay, so I'm going to click share. And boom, now my coworkers should be able to see me. All right, well, I don't know if anyone is here, so I'm just going to get started. So I have here these, actually, let me pull up the Procreate file first. Because, well, let's start by telling you guys what all of this is. So I am the lead animator for TV's Adventures, this project being created by this wonderful nonprofit, Clouded Mentalities. Um, it's about mental health, disability awareness, being a kid, slice of life. It's, it's wonderful, and I'm, I'm honored to be working on it. Um, and it's also going to be a children's book. So what we're doing first, before we start animating it, is we're going to be making the children's book illustrations. So I made this sketch in Procreate. I don't know if this is upside down or not for you guys. Maybe I should do it like this. Whatever. It's, it, it'll be fine. Even if it's upside down, it'll be fine. Um, and then I printed it out on all of these quadrants. Um, because I have a really big piece of paper. And I'm going to set this up so that everything is in its place. That'll work. And I've got this, I'll, I'll do that later. I've got this light table that I can use to trace it onto my watercolor paper. This stream is not sponsored by Canson Art Supplies. <laughs> But let's get a nice big piece of watercolor paper. That looks good to me. And let's get this all set up so that everyone is in their place. Oh, it looks like it got it turned out a little bit big. That's okay. I can work with this. We still know the basic composition here. Hmm. Okay, so sometimes when you're doing art, things don't go exactly as planned, and that's okay. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to recreate it. One moment while I set up my... Can you guys still see all this okay? I'm going to tilt it down a bit. There we go. You should still be able to see most of the things. Oh, that looks like it's not bright enough. Let me turn up the brightness of my lamp. Maybe if I swap to... Yeah, good enough, I think. Okay, now I'm going to take out my pencil. I've got a backpack full of goodies that I love. I got it from a dumpster while I was at SCAD, actually. But not, not like a dumpster dumpster, but like a... There's, at the end of every semester, we make a trash pile, like a pile of things that are perfectly fine, but we don't want anymore. 
so I was able to reuse. And I washed it first. Make sure you wash things. And don't go digging in the trash without your parents' permission. I have my parents' permission. Um, and be careful when you do. And this was a much more sanitary trash expedition. Anyway, enough about trash. Let's get on to art. Um, I've got my favorite pencil here. It's a sumo grip. Uh, it broke, so I pieced the pieces of the two broken pencils together to make a new, wonderful, big combined pencil. And now we are going to turn off our light table because we don't actually need to trace anything right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my image that I'm basing this image off of. And I'm going to leave it right there for you guys to see. I accidentally turned it on anyway. That looks better, I think. Okay. And let's take these out anyway, because it's good to have a, a base for things like this. There we go. And yeah, and I'm going to be here with you guys, if anyone is here and listening, until roughly 3 p.m. Because I have a, a few a few things to do at 3 p.m. Oh, we're getting there we go. That'll work. Hmm. Okay, maybe what I should do instead, thinking on the fly here, is take this, and I'm gonna go into my folders, my, my photos folder, and find that image. No, that's not it. That's it, okay. And I'm going to make it really bright. And I'm going to, hold on, I should turn off battery saver so this doesn't turn off randomly on me. There we go. And now I'm going to do a neat little trick. Oh, that didn't work. Hold on. Guided access. Start. And now, no matter how much I touch it, it won't move. So what I can do here is I can make it, oh, it's already super bright. And I'm gonna turn off our lamp for a little bit, actually. And I'm gonna see if I can make the, oh, well, I'm silly. Maybe all that was silly. You know what? I'm just going to get started. So this is the episode TB goes to the fair with Papa. And in this episode TB TB's adventures is this wonderful little show slash um children's cartoon about TB, who's a little kid, um, going on big adventures. And the first adventure that we decided to tell you guys about was when he goes to the fair with his dad, because that shows that he is a kid with trusted adults who likes doing fun things with the people that he loves. And in the fair, you have all kinds of things that you can do and explore, and his dad knows a lot about the history of the fair, and it's fun. I'm going to do some tree doodle scribbles right here, and this, these are the booths, 
where like people can get food and merchandise and like cowboy hats and all the things that you love getting when you're at the fair. I'm going to add this little happy little balloon and this nice Ferris wheel right back here. And it's off in the distance behind the trees. And there's a bird over here. My coworker Kelly, she our our art our animation and art intern is actually did the bird um, really well. Actually, you know what? She's already drawing that. So I'm gonna erase the bird for now. Um, I just kind of put that there so that I have the faint little sketch lines to know where it is. And make some clouds. Nice happy sunny day. And maybe it's on a hill or something. Let's do that. And let's pretend that his dad is right here and TV is right here. And my coworker is drawing TV and his dad as well because she's awesome. But I'm just gonna have this here for my own reference to know where they are in the space. Actually, I'm gonna divide this into quadrants. Oh, hello, light people. So that we all know where everything that happened again, where everything is. I have no idea if anyone's here. Oh, it looks like we had one viewer for a little while. That's nice. I have no, that, that might have been me actually grabbing the link. Oh, well. Let's do some fun things here. So now we know everything is. This is a common trick in composition. Um, TV's here because he's short, because he's a kid. He's like four, five, six, maybe maybe seven. He's he's yeah, he's a little kid, you know. So he's little. That doesn't mean that he's not smart. Or that he's not will you know able to go on adventures it just means that he's little he is a little guy and he loves his film and i think i might have had like another ride here like one of those wee wee kind of tall rides here i'm gonna make it smaller it's not important it should be small that doesn't mean that things that aren't important are small, because in comparison to this really tall sculpture, in this perspective, TV's really big. It's just that when you're doing a composition, some things take up more space, and that means different things. Um, let's forget what these things look like. Maybe I should look up a reference. Let's do... And we're basing this mostly, this could be any fair you want, but we are basing this off of the North Carolina State Fair. So Carolina State Fair. And I'm gonna enter results out of frame just to make sure it's all safe for you guys. Here we go. Now we have one, lots of results. So Okay, so that's how that works. Okay, so it's I was doing it the wrong way. It's more like this. All uppity. And it's got a bit of a square structure to it. And it's got this little lane in it. And let's put in, let's make our Ferris wheel big, but still small a little bit. And let's make this a bit smaller. Little flags. It's a fair. It's like little, little, little. I don't know what color these flags are. But I just see that there's flags in my reference photo, right here. So those might not be flags actually, but I'm gonna pretend that they are. Little. I don't think they're American flags. I think they're just like fun state fair flags. So let's make them triangular. Maybe that maybe the flags exist so that airplanes can be let so it can be to airplanes like, hey, 
we're here. Don't crash into me. And the airplanes are like, okay, I see your signal. And I'm going to not crash into you because I can see you. And the th everyone's like, yay. Okay. I think that's good for now on that. Ferris wheel. Let's add it. Let's give let's give this Ferris wheel a bit of dimension, I think. Let's make it an oval and like like a cylinder. And that like a like a bicycle wheel. How sometimes things have different dimensions. And little 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 things shall be going out a bit more. But like little booths that people can sit in and go up to the top and be like, wow! That's amazing! I can see the whole fair. But we can only see a little bit of the fair because we're here with TV and his papa. Who are exploring the fair so that we can see the booths and things. And let's make some booths and things. A hello light table. I'm gonna, I'm keeping the light table here because my I have, my desk is made out of a stool with a big piece of wood on it because I like having things be temporary because then it's less it's less likely that I'll let them get messy or too messy, which is good because you need need a nice clean surface for all your drawing purposes. I'm gonna move this watercolor set out of the way for now because we're not watercoloring yet. I don't think I have anyone watching me right now. Oh, I do. I do have someone watching me. Yay. That's good. That's fine. Oh, that's my boss telling me, hey, good luck. Have fun on your stream. to my photo. Actually, what I might do is make this a split screen so I can look at both of them at once. So I have my... I have no idea if you guys can see this. It's probably all just white to you. Oh, 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 I actually like that better. I just realized that everything is upside down to you. Maybe we should fix that. One moment. Time to turn this web camera around. Hmm. Oh, come on. Okay, I think that works. Do you guys see everything? Oh, I forgot to turn my lamp back on. I'm gonna turn it to warm because I like warm. I like warm things. There we go. Yay. I think you guys can see everything. Okay. Please don't fall down the little Mr. Webcam. Okay. I think we're good. Hmm. Okay, have a little 
those here. And I'm not going to add any props or anything to these, because my coworkers like, I'm making all the characters look like they belong in this space. And I think that we want to be able to rearrange the props once they're then in there, so that if we want a different booth to be a cowboy booth, or to be an, Oreo, uh, an Oreos booth instead of a cowboy booth, we can do that easily. And I'm like, that sounds like a good idea. Everyone likes this idea. I think I'm gonna have a light, like another path right here so that people can go to other columns of booths. And a little sign that's like, hey, here's some other things you can do in this fair. And you're like, oh, I can do other things in this fair? And the sign's like, yeah, look at all the things. We've got, we've got, we've got animals. We've got, we've got giant food. We, because farmers are really good at their jobs sometimes. And we've got more games and prizes and maybe there's an event like a concert or something and you're like oh, that sounds amazing let's go do that hmm okay hmm this sign looks like it's too tall. I've worked with signs before. Let's bring the sign over here so you can see more of it. It's sticking out a little bit. That's okay. Sometimes it's nice to stick out. Then people notice you. And that's good. Sometimes. Sometimes it's okay if you don't want to stick out. It's fine. But if you're a sign, then usually you want people to notice you. So it's okay to stick out because then you get your message across. Okay, let's make some guidelines so that we know where on the ground the sign is gonna stand. We're leaving all this empty space because it's a dirt path and that's where TB and his dad, Papa, are going to be. And maybe there's like, like a big gate here. Although it might be covered up by TB and his dad. That's okay. Sometimes we have details that people don't end up noticing. And that's fine because it helps the greater composition and the greater story be told a little bit better. And you can always tell people about the hidden little details later in like extra stuff. Or if you have a friend and you're like, hey, did you notice this detail? And they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't notice that detail. That sounds amazing. I like listening to director's commentaries and stuff for this exact reason, because sometimes you'll, you'll have details that no one knows about. And that's fun. It's like a little secret between you and the people who made it. Except it's not that big a secret because people like talking about what they make most of the time. If you're someone who makes things and you don't like talking about what you make most of the time, that's fine. You know, different people uh, like different things. Like some people want to stick out and other people don't want to stick out. And that's fine. It's good. It's good that there's all kinds of different people in the world because then we've got all different kinds of things that you can learn from each other. I like doing this. This is fun. Hello, light table. Maybe I should turn light table around so that I don't I don't hit her as much. But I think that's a good idea. Let's do that. There we go. And now I'll only touch your turn on button if you want, if I want that to happen. 
if I want there to be light, I can press your, the button and, and you can be like, oh, you want some light now? Okay, I'll do that. And I'll be like, thank you, light table. And the light table will be like, no problem, except it won't because it's a light table and not everything is animate like humans and animals are. I think you should treat things well, though. Even if, even if a thing can't think, it's still important to treat them right. Because if, if there is a thing that exists in the world, then it's important. I need to replace the eraser in my pencil because I ran out of eraser in my pencil. Let's see if I have an eraser replacement in my backpack. I'm looking through all the things. Oh, oh, replacement eraser. Now this is neat. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the eraser stick out a bunch. I'm gonna see if I can pull it out. There we go. And I'm gonna set that aside because sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of eraser. And I'm gonna stick this back in. And I'm gonna twist it back in. Hello, thank you. Can you go down please? Thank you. And I'm going to make it go down as far as it can go. And then we still have a lot of leftover stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take something sharp. And if there is a something sharp around here, I might have to look on my other desk. One moment. I found it. I found my X-Acto knife. You gotta be careful with these things because they're sharp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my watercolor pad and on the back of it, there's cardboard. And that's a safe place to cut on. So I'm gonna do an incision right here. And then I have this for later when it needs another refill. I put the knife in a safe place. I'm gonna put the watercolor paper in a safe place. It's on top of my scanner, don't worry about it. And I'm gonna have my eraser. Yay! And there's my references again. Let's keep going. Grab sign. I think the next time I do this, I mean, th this time I was just worried about getting it started because I've been trying to get live streaming up and running for a while now. And it's been tricky because I have lots of things to do in my life. I am a busy, grown up, earnest woman. I'm a lot entire, but whatever. Uh, but now I've got live streaming up and running. Yay. And I think next time I do this, I'm going to tell a few more people that I'm doing this. This time I was just worried about actually getting it started. Then I was about making sure everyone watched. Because people can watch this later if they want. I, I feel like some people who care about me or maybe TV's adventures or maybe just, just art things in general will come here and be like, huh. This sounds nice. I'm going to have this on while I make my art or something like that. I like I like watching long videos when I make my art. Instead, this time, instead of watching long videos, I'm sitting here talking with you guys. And that's fun. Oh, I like that angle. Hello, screen. Stay on, please. Thank you. I'm going to take a sip of water because it's important to stay hydrated. Okay. All hydrated. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> nope. Make a little hinge here and the sign there.
Hmm. Oh, I'm sweating. I'm going to grab a towel so that my sweat doesn't end up on the watercolor. Because when we're ready to start watercoloring, I'm going to get some actual water. Watercoloring with sweat. That sounds gross. We're not going to do that. Whoop. Sorry about that. Let's see if I can actually tilt this forward a bit more. There we go. So we can have this right here. Yeah. I'm going to check what time it is real quick. 12.07. We're making good time. I'm going to make this one of those open on the side type booths. I'm going to make these a few different sizes and shapes because booths tend to be like that. Maybe this one's rectangular instead of pointy on the top. Let's erase that pointy on the top. There we go. Now it's all rectangles. And got some babbles up here. I think this is looking good so far. I would ask you guys what you think, but I there's no I don't think there's anyone watching me right now. That's okay. I'm gonna do this regularly, I think, because I like do. I I I'm enjoying this, even if there's no one here yet. I think there's been a couple people here and there, but even if there's no one here yet, I enjoy doing this. So maybe maybe in the future there will be more people. Hmm. Oh, that looks better. That's gonna be a less pointy one too. Maybe there's curtains here. Maybe it's, it's fancy and scary. Maybe there's like clothes or something being sold there. I think this is probably the cowboy stand. A little sign here, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. And I think there's more games and food stuff here, too. Nice big clouds and nice dirt paths right here. And let's make this go out a bit more. Maybe this is deeper. And it's going off the page a bit, but that's okay. Sometimes the scene is bigger than what you just, than the only the stuff that you see. Usually, if I were digital, I would have made this smaller or maybe changed the dimensions so that we'd have more to work with. But I think this works for now as it is. I also raised this head because my coworker Kelly, who is amazing, is going to be drawing that instead. She's already starting sketching it, and I, I've seen it, and I'm like, this is good. Here's some things that you can you can change to make it work a little bit better, but most part, this is good. You got good shapes and good lines. And a little booths back in the background. 
because it's a big scene, the big fair, people doing lots of things. It's a really big fair. Having fun, playing games, playing out with their families and friends. There's probably spaces between the booths outside. Yeah. Big fun fair. Maybe I'll just bring the towel all the way over here. There I am. Hmm. I think maybe it might be time to start watercolors soon. Or, well, to start the ink at least. What do you guys think? Okay. I just need to fix these small details first. And I'll leave it empty, maybe some hooks here, so that people can make their own, just fill them out with what they want. Let's this a little bit off. Have a banana snack real quick because I like bananas they have good they're sweet and they have lots of potassium in them my girlfriend doesn't like bananas so that's okay that just means there's more bananas for me <laughs> And now let's get out some pens. This is my favorite pen. It is a to uh, Fudenosuke Tombo. My girlfriend actually knows Japanese and she would be horrified by my mispronunciation of that. So I'm gonna use, this was a test set design that, I, that we didn't end up using from earlier. And we might still use it, so I'm not going to test this on the front, I'm going to test this on the back. To see if this is wet. That's wet. That, that's a good pen right there. There we go, that works too. Now we know these pens are good pens. That are still working and don't need to be retired yet. Okay. Now. Hmm. What to ink first? Hmm. I think this sign is probably the most defined thing here right now. So let's ink the sign.
There we go. And I'm very careful here. I'm going to be honest. Inking is my least favorite part of art making because it's you have to be very careful because it's permanent. And I like sketching because it's not permanent yet. You can just figure things out and it's fine. And I like coloring because you're adding all these nice pretty colors to things and you can that's the part where it comes alive but inking is tricky i think this is turning out well enough though so far that's fine mm. <sighs> I'm being quieter here because I'm focusing on making the lines good. Yay! Our sign looks good. Mostly. It's a bit wonky. I think that's fine. It's a kid. It's a kid's book, so things can be a little bit wonky, maybe. And that's just the style of the thing. Maybe I should define the next thing a bit better with my sketches before I go in and ink it. But inking is also a very important step because as you can see, my my sketches are very, very messy. So inking is sort of kind of where you find the, and this is where my little bit of eraser comes in handy. It's where you find where the lines actually are and make the form come into the scene in a way that's more solid and defined and that people can understand more and that's the part that's the purpose of art isn't it to communicate things with other people so if your attention isn't clear then i'm not going to say you did a bad job because the because art is also meant to be interpreted, and so long as you get a reaction out of someone, I think it counts. But the purpose of art is to communicate. And if the thing that you want to communicate is confusion, then that's fine. But I'm not trying to communicate confusion with this piece. My intention with this piece is to communicate love and joy and a feeling of nostalgia and togetherness and that's the most important part of art is to decide what you want to communicate and figure out the best way to communicate that that's what i learned is that's that's what design is is intention maybe we don't need that back leg That's fine. Uh, 
this little shelf here. Good. Let's bring this in front. Bring this down. Okay, that's good. I think that's good. <clears throat> Bring this out. Make our little shelf. Work. There you are. That's good. I think that's good. Mm. And let's use our little eraser. Oh, and I have to redo some lines because the eraser Need some of the ink go up. And that happens sometimes, especially if you don't wait for the ink to dry a lot, because sometimes there's a lot of pencil underneath your ink. Mm. It's a bit messy, but I think that'll be... I'll make it look good later. Okay. And this part. And I like to think that the more I do the parts that I don't like about art, like, like line art and stuff, the better I'll get at it. because skill takes time to build. And I'm really good at sketching because I've done a lot of sketching. And I'm really good at coloring because I've done a lot of coloring. But I'm not that great at line art yet, even though I've done a decent amount of line art over the years. Aha, there we go. And sometimes things work out. And you can figure out things as you go. And there we go. And this line's really close to the other line, but that's okay. There we go. And there's another good leg. On our little booth. And let's, this is fabric, so it's okay if it's a bit wobbly. And bring that over here. And I'm going to make this line, like, implied mostly, because it's a folded line. There we are. So the fabric is folding over the thing, and those lines can be a little more vague. Blowing on it to make the ink dry faster so we don't have to do it again this time. Oh, we might still have to do it again this time. That's okay. Or maybe not. Maybe it's fine. It's I think it's I think it's nice that the lines are a little bit faded, and the more of the distance there is, it's a nice effect. Maybe I think I'll keep it. Hmm, and we've 
got our first booth, mostly. I probably got to do a back leg. Where is the back leg? Let's see, it's over here. Let's make our little move here. I ended up not doing this back leg because it's a little off camera, but we need to do this one because things have shapes in them and I want the shapes to, I want this to feel real, kind of. Suspension of disbelief, if you will. So that we can have our thing. And I've always been pretty good at figuring out where hidden lines are. Okay, so I'm actually a little bit worried about this back one. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to find a little ruler. I've got a baby ruler around here somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. If not, that's okay. I can find another straight edge and use that instead. Where is my baby ruler? Ah. Hmm. Okay. I don't know where that is. That's fine. We can use a different straight edge. That'll work. That works. That, oh wait, no, that's that's too curved. Never mind. I found a comb. I thought it would work. Maybe it wouldn't. Here's a... Oh, that's fun. A clamp. Let's use a clamp. <laughs> this is the... There's this thing that I do that my dad calls Maeve Guyvering. Because my name is Maeve. And there is this guy in a TV show who would make things out of everyday objects in order to solve problems and he got very inventive with his solutions and he he i do that a lot even when maybe there's a better tool for the job and he's like Maeve, you keep making these weird solutions when you could oh oops when you could have just Hmm. This is why sometimes we need the right tool for the job, because sometimes I make mistakes when I when I'm Maeve Guyvering. <sighs> Got a spare line here. I'm gonna use my eraser on this a lot. So that it's more faded. So that it's easier to ignore the fact that I made my line wrong the first time. It's okay. We live, we learn, we do better next time. And I pretty much run out of this little guy, but ah. I, that's that's fine. That'll work. That 
parts. Mm. Okay, let's check the time. Okay. 12.37. Or about 12.32. More water. Hydration is important. And more bananas. I, I only ate half of one last time. Let's get back to it. I'm defining this, I think. I'm not going to find the legs as much in the other booth as I did in this one, because they're farther away. And the details can fade in the background. Mmm. Those are good. Yeah. Mm, the trees. And this is kind of a cartoony style of trees, um, where I'm being a little less detailed with it. Sometimes you want to, actually, I'll, I'll pull this up. So sometimes, like, with this cover that I made for TV's Adventures, I had some branches where you can see the individual leaves. But in the back, you can see I just kind of made it blobby and added the texture with my paint. And I, since these trees are farther away from the camera and this tree is kind of like the whole composition, I did the individual leaves. But with this, I'm going to just have them be blobby and vague and add the texture with my watercolors. And that'll be good and fine. And work. And the ferris wheel is going to be kind of hidden behind some of the trees. It's a lush green fairground with dirt paths and games to play and people having fun and doing things. And I just realized that the back of this booth is empty. So let's let's add like a little little thing for a fabric sign. Because usually you can't really see the backs of boots. Usually there's like a big fabric sign or something blocking your view of what goes beyond the booth. Hmm. Well, maybe this one has like square things instead of curtains. I feel like curtains are a very specific design choice in your booth. So like, and we want to keep these booths kind of vague so that we can decide what they are later. And I'm like, you know, I'm making little design decisions now because there's some things that I think these booths probably do, but let's add like a little counter in the front of this one. This is one of those booths that's blocked that you don't go inside. Well, maybe the counter is a bit back behind it so that you can have a little bit of an awning to get some shade from the sun. I 
And it's open to the booth next to it. Booths don't usually do that, but I think maybe these booths are friends. And that's so that we can see the inside of this one. I don't know what exactly this one does. Maybe there's a rack of clothes here or something. Uh, hmm. Because, like, even if we're leaving the intentions vague, I think that having some details that are in the background add, add a lot of life to it. So I'm keeping it vague, but I'm adding little differences. And there's a booth there. Maybe this is a game booth. Like we got prizes in the back. I'm gonna not draw the prizes though because that's not my part of this job. Because we decided that earlier in a meeting. Because we want to change it later. Maybe. I'm gonna add some wood planks back here though. Make it like, you know. Like there's stuff, like there could be stuff there. Let's have our legs here. And the next booth over, maybe this one has curtains. Yeah. Maybe it's like a mystic shop or something. I would put curtains on the side here too. Because these booths might also be friends. Or maybe they're not. Maybe I can, like, yeah, maybe I should leave the insides covered. Like, they, they put the curtains down on the side so that they're not distracting these other people. Maybe, there's a maybe it's a clothes shop or a, or a, like, you know those little booths where you can get stones and fancy, like, fancy little, little gemstones and stuff? And the lady will say, this one is healing. If you if you hold this piece of cool quartz up to your forehead, it can help ease ed headaches. Which, of course, it can. Because if you put a nice, smooth, cold thing on your forehead, that's, that's going to help. I think I believe in a little bit of magic. I, li I like magic as a concept. I like the idea that people can um, make their own miracles. And that people can make th I'm an artist. Of course I like the idea that people can make things and that people can change the world with the things that they make and the things that they do. I like that. I like that idea. I also think that it's important to believe in science and stuff. Like to to think about the world around you critically and not just to believe everything you hear. And to like research your opinions and make sure that you're making good decisions for yourself and to listen to your doctors and stuff like and some of the some of the mystic things does work like you, if you like there are cert, there are certain er herbs and stuff that help with digestion and like sleeping like if you have some chamomile tea that can help you sleep and that that's, has its roots in magic and stuff, and like those practices. So I think that there is a there is a purpose to you know to a lot of it, and like like tarot cards. The thing about I don't think that tarot cards can actually you know tell you the future. I think that the purpose of tarot cards is to tell you what you think, you know what you want the future to be, because you you'll see a. They'll see a card and you'll be told what the meaning of the card is and you'll in your head think oh that means this but that's not necessarily you know the cards themselves telling you what it means that's you in your own brain finding out what you think it means and what you want it to mean and i think that's important it's an important like it's it's an it's good for like a thought exercise 
to like help you sort through your own thoughts and stuff. I think it's like therapy. I don't, I'm not sure if they can tell the future. I don't think they can. I think that the magic of tarot is a little bit different than that. But if you disagree with me, that's okay. You know, because lots of different people have lots of different opinions in that in this world, and that's a good thing. I like that different people can think different things about things like this. <sighs> and also, little little gem shops in the state fair are fun anyway, even if the magic isn't real. There's a little bit of magic in your amazement of it and in how pretty it is and how like the because those stones came from the earth and you learn a little bit more about the world around you by investigating them and by looking at them and by thinking about what they are and i think that you know depending on your definition of magic i think that's a that in it of itself is a little bit magical so i think it's worthwhile I'm, I'm doing little little points here, little flags. My iPad was telling me things. Maybe I should put on do not disturb mode on my iPad because it's, it's right here. There we go. Now we've got do not disturb mode on and now I won't be interrupted by LinkedIn notifications. <laughs> I'll do that from now on. is turning out pretty good. I think that we're getting a nice defined scene here. Hmm. What time is it? 12.44. We're making really good time. Look at us. Like the center of the Ferris wheel is actually here. Or maybe it's like an axle. I think Ferris wheels are axles usually anyway. We have a little the the bars of the Ferris wheel which keep it up. It's like a it's like a bicycle wheel, but it has to be strong and sturdy to keep all the people up. Can't just be a big bicycle wheel. But we're gonna we're gonna think of it like like a big bicycle wheel because there's a lot of a lot of inventions are just big bicycle wheels. Like I have a I have a character in my own thing called very space and my, my one of my favorite character in that show in that move in that comic slash show that i'm making is this character called punk and she's a wheelchair user so i had to figure out how to draw wheelchairs and how to like make wheelchairs move and stuff and i had and i made some friends on the internet who are actual wheelchair users and they, they helped me figure it out. They sent me some wonderful links to things. There's this guy called Wheels 2 Walking who makes really good, like, beginner wheelchair user tutorials on YouTube. I like him a lot. I've, I've watched... It, it's, it's really good for animation reference for me. And one of the things about TV's adventures is um, TV's dad, Papa, has, 
is a mobility aid user as well. He has crutches that he actually invented himself. He's got a patent on them. And they're like, I like them. They're, I think they're a cool design and it's, it's good for the, and like, he's based on a real person. He's based on my boss's dad, the guy who hired me, his, his actual dad in real life. Um, but I think he makes a good character because it, there's, there are lots of people in real life who are like that, you know? who don't really have a whole lot, who don't get to see themselves in, in cartoons and stuff a whole lot. So I think it's important to have all kinds of different people in your stories um, so that lots and lots of different kinds of people can see themselves in your stories. And that's a big part of why I like, I'm a, I like disability advocacy because there's people who are just living their lives, you know, like I have ADHD. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of that. I, so it's a big part. And like just having ADHD, it's a big part of how I've ended up living my life. You know, like it's just an aspect of how I exist and it can be inconvenient sometimes. But for the most part, you know, I don't mind it. Like I've got meds, I've got, so I've got ways that I deal with it. I've got, and there's parts of me that I think would not be the same if I didn't have ADHD. My brain didn't work a little bit differently. I wouldn't be as passionate or as thoughtful And I like being myself. I like who I am. Laws and all. I think it's time to do more inking. Yay. Let's bring this cabinet booth counter thing in. And I'm sure you're sitting here, listening to me ramble on, drawing my art, and thinking to yourself, oh, of course she has ADHD. That just makes sense. And to that, I say, cool. I don't actually have a strong opinion on your opinion of me one way or the other. I'm just sitting here, living my life making my art, making cartoons that everyone, that I hope that people will like. I hope that kids and maybe some, some teenagers and grownups and stuff will like, because I think that like we're making the show for kids, but I think that, you know, a lot of people connect with kids media and that's good. Because, like, you know, kids are people. And... Stuff made for kids. Like, and we're, we're targeting... Like, this is for kids. But... I think that a few other people might end up relating to it, too. More pe some people might be invested in it because like I remember when I was a kid and I was looking after my baby sister and we were watching stuff together and I got you know invested in some of the things that she was watching too and that's a good thing you know I was, I was connecting with her and I was connecting with the things that she likes and then I could talk with her more about things like that like um like Pengu and like um, I forget what it was called but I th there was this I think Korean show that we watched a lot together that was 3D animated and um, there was this little little dude he had a he had a big pink elephant 
who was one of his best friends, and she was a ballerina. And I liked her a lot. Um, and it was a fun show. It had some silly moments. I liked it. I forget what it was called, though. Usually when you hear people talking about this, they're like, oh, I remember the name, but I don't. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll think of it later. Oh, and Little Einsteins was really good, too. I liked that show. I remember when I was in high school and a bunch of people suddenly got obsessed with Little Einsteins. And I was like, what's going on? Usually I'm the only one who cares about this kind of thing. Me and the people that I babysit. But they were like, no, it's a bop. And I'm like, I mean, you're right. I don't think, I, I don't think the Little Einsteins thing will happen to TV's adventures. <laughs> Maybe it will. I don't know. I can't predict the future. <laughs> Sometimes things just happen. I think I'm getting better at line art already. See, I'm always nervous, you know, when I start things, and then I get into it, and it's like, oh. Okay. This wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Let's have a shelf here. Oh, I messed that shelf up a bit. That's okay. That's, that's fine. That's just how things are sometimes. You just gotta roll with it. Got some drapey fabric here. And there's that Mystic Stones booth, which is what it probably is. I like the Mystic Stones booths. I like, I have, I've, I like, I live in the DC area. So I like going to the Smithsonian's a lot. And my absolute favorite, um, exhibit is the gemology exhibit in the smithsonian museum of natural history and i i've always liked that exhibit a lot because a lot of it is about like you know how life on earth got started and like meteors that come down to earth and like how the earth formed and how like what chemicals were involved and like oh i shake, shook the thing a bit there like what chemicals were involved in the creation of the earth's crust and like what well i don't just like it because it's pretty colors and shiny although that there's that too i like it because it's a lot about how life started and I'm fascinated by that. Rocks are cool. That's what I think. We've got a whole line of booths here. Let's do a time check. It's 1256. We're making good progress. We've got a whole like extra few hours here. I'm almost out of water. I should have probably packed more. I have some peanuts. Whoop. Like peanuts. They're good protein. These are honey roasted. So they're extra yummy. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. And now these need more detail too, I think. I maybe should choose trees. Hmm. Hmm. 
I would ask what do you guys think, but there's no one here yet. I had a couple people earlier. That's fine. I had a feeling that, you know, there wouldn't be a whole lot of people this first time. And that, um... Like I, I, I'm, I'm having to build this up. That's good, I think. You know, like people grow and change and get better at what they do over time, and there's something a little bit magical about that. We're planning on having this be a making of video, but a lot of my commentary here probably won't be included because it's going to be a long live stream. What they're probably going to do is they're probably going to like have it be a speed paint, just so like my hands going like doo -doo 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 -doo, real fast um, on the screen, so you can see everything happening kind of like all at once. And I think that would be cool, like have a. A time lapse, that's the word. Of me making this background come to life. Let's have the tree line end here, actually, I think. Because then there's like, it goes this way. Or, or here. Double the tree here. But there's like a path back here. I should make the blue sun better too. And there's like more booths back here. Not like stuff that people are doing. And we're basing this off of the North Carolina State Fair because, like, you know, A, it's a good, it's a good fair. And B, because that's the one that, that, that my boss based his story off of. I think he grew up in North Carolina. Or at least if he didn't grow up there, he, he's, a, he's in that area now. I like things change, people move. Maybe I'm going to ink some trees now. And there's this technique that I'm using right now called scumbling, where you just kind of let your pen do whatever it wants and like add a little bit of shake and it makes this really nice texture and if if a character has like say textured hair or something i'll usually just kind of scumble it tb's hair usually when i'm illustrating tb's hair tb i'll i'll scumble his hair and i have a character in fairy space kiddo who also has scumbled hair um punk also has curly hair but i try to be a bit more defined with hers because, you know, she, she's a punk and she's like very, I think that she's, um, 
I don't want to say really careful with her appearance, her her, but like you know, purposefully sloppy, in like in. But she, she, I think that she she likes her hair and she likes taking care of it a little bit. Um, it's like kind of like a half mohawk type style, um, and curly, but in a you know styled way, and it is naturally curly. But it's like, you know, she, she likes keeping it a very specific shape. Because I think that in her mind, and I relate to this because I like, I, I just, like, she's like, people are going to stare at me anyway. Might as well be my choice how I present to the world and how people see me like people aren't just staring at me because of my disability or because I'm acting weird or because of you know things that aren't really in my control but people are paying attention to me because of the things that I choose to control about myself like I can control my style I can control if I decide to dress in a weird way or in an unusual but good way, like, you know. And if people are paying attention anyway, you know, might as well try to open their horizons a little bit. You're going to be memorable. And when you're naturally someone who's going to be memorable, there, I feel like, at least for me, there's this sort of natural inclination to want to make a difference. Um, like, people pay attention to me anyway because I've, I'm just weird. And that's fine, you know. I've, I've accepted that. And if people are going to remember me, I might as well give them something worth remembering. Might as well leave a positive impression on their minds, you know? Make them, make them think about themselves. Make them think about the ways that they interact with others. Make a story worth remembering. Maybe this is a little too deep to talk about on a first stream, but that's okay, I think. This is just stream of consciousness. I think we're doing good. I like these trees. Let's, let's bring on our, well, this, there's not much left. <laughs> And I'm glad I'm working on TV's adventures. You know, it's my I've done I've done animation stuff before. You know. I've been I've been the lead on projects before. Like I was a lead an like one of many lead animators on Monochrome RPG. But I'm really excited about this because the focus is on mental health awareness and on you know it's a children's story it's a children's television story and it's gonna be on youtube but you know youtube is is where it's at right now in terms of animation i think it's got all kinds of good good shows on youtube these days because people are free to make their own stuff. To be inventive and creative and to tell messages that they want to tell. And there's something wonderful about that, I think. Yeah. 
think we've got web comics and we've got web shows and we've got all kinds of things these days. You know what? Maybe I should break out my big eraser. Big eraser. And then once I'm ink done inking all this, I'm going to scan it with my big scanner that I've got right here next to me off to the side and so that we can have line art. And then I'm going to watercolor it. And the scanning shouldn't take that long. And I can, t I can keep talking with you guys through that step of the process. Time for little details. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not the only creator with ADHD out there. Some of my favorite creators have eighty eight have like ADHD and stuff too. Like Dan Pavenmeyer, creator of Phineas and Ferb, which is one of my favorite shows of all time. And like Dav Pilkey, creator of the Cat Underpants. Which I loved the books as a kid. I the, the Flipperamas actually sorta of kind of got me into like that I, I made a few of my own flipperamas as a kid these little two two frame like flip it animations and i think that I, i'm not going to say that's where all of it started because you know there were a lot of people telling me oh you can't be an animator that takes so much patience and hard work and i was like patience and hard work oh no i've got adhd i can't do that but then i grew up and i saw animation college student stuff on the internet and i was like wait a minute i can do that and then i started you know studying it and stuff i think this is a fair i think this is a carousel back here and now that i'm an adult i know a lot of people who are i, I think that a like solid at least like 40 percent of the people at my art school ha had ADHD as well because there's something about like like you get bored you know boredom is the enemy when you have ADHD you always have to have something that's keeping your brain going because otherwise you'll just stop and that's terrible so and art is something that you you know you can do that anywhere if you have a sketchbook and some pencils, if you if you plan ahead and bring the things that you need to do it, you can do that anywhere. And people usually don't try to stop you, you know, especially if you're good at it. And I think that, and like, because you're, it's like kind of your go-to thing that you can do when you're stuck somewhere, I think that, a lot of people just got a lot of practice in that way because you can always you can always pull out a sketchbook and make some some nice little little doodles for yourself and make some fun characters that you like and these are going to be some very blobby carousel animals back here because it's in the background and people might not even see it 
but that's okay because I, I like it. I think it's fun that there's a carousel back here. Even if it's secret, you guys will know. The people watching this video, you'll you'll see. You'll see the carousel that I'm making right now. And I think it's a fair. Fairs have fairs have carousels. It's like a standard fair fair. Maybe I should look up carousel. Maybe I should see what one actually looks like. Go into my little bar here and type care-o-cell. Oh, that's what they look like. Okay. A bit more detailed than I thought. Let's add that. It's good to look up references because sometimes you have things that you think things look like, but then you're like, oh wait, no, I was wrong. You gotta go out into the world and see the real world, see the real life. Learn. See what it's actually like. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, that looks better. I like that. I think I'm going to make this a little bit shorter. Mm, no, it's, I think I liked it better taller. Let's add more trees. More trees. Trees are good. I like trees. Trees are our friends. Yeah, nice, nice texture to a background. Like if you, if you, if a fee, if a scene feels empty to you, and you don't know what to do with it, trees. Everywhere could use more trees. I guess unless it's like a like a sci-fi, you know, space station or something, but even then, you know, they gotta get their oxygen from somewhere. Oh, this is looking good. I like where this is going. I have some like a little higher shelf here. One, two, three, four, five. This is like five tenths in a row. And this is like a few more tenths in a row. This is like a like a very small alleyway. Like there's probably another tent like right here. Time check. One fifteen. Hmm, that like needs to be longer, that's why I'm doing this here. Well, the tree line is lower here than it is here because it's like the perspective is different. I think this is turning out really good. I like this. I like I like how this is turning out. Let's take our little carousel while we still got our, our reference up. can't see my head I just checked but I'm leaning in real close to the paint to the picture
yeah. Let's add those those blobby little animals. We're not putting too much detail into these because they're in the background and I'm not sure if people will even see them anyway. And also horses are a pain to draw. Like we have socially accepted shorthands for horses these days because like Lauren Faust made um, the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic and that like she simplified the characters a lot to make them easier to animate. So we have like accepted short and like a lot of people adopted that, that short, same shorthand for horses. Um, but they're still tricky to draw. So, and this is in the background and I think it's nice that the blobby animals work. And I'm adding some stuff. There we go. That's a nice carousel. And it's so far in the back, you can't even see it. That's how, okay, let me, I'm going to bring this up closer to the webcam. You still can't see it that well. It's not that good a webcam. That's okay. We're learning. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll invest in a slightly better webcam later on. Who knows? Probably. At some point. Maybe I'll get like a camera. I have a camera, but it's, it's a little bit broken. I might take it to a shop to get it fixed. Doing more stumbling. I like scumbling. It's also fun to say scumbling. And it's a good technique for art stuff. You know, like if you need texture anywhere. And I'm being a bit looser with the boots here because I think most of them are going to be covered up by TB and his dad. Probably. I'm doing these like. Let me lose service. I think there's more room for invention on these ones than there were in, the, in these ones. Like you'll see more of these because TD is right here and he's smaller, but his dad's gonna be like right here. So he's gonna take up a lot of the space. having fun. Are you guys having fun? I hope you are. It's always important to to have some fun whenever you're doing art because like if you're not enjoying it then why are you doing it you know? Even if it's for a job you gotta find like ways to enjoy the little things that you do in your everyday life. And I know for me personally, if I don't get to make art, I go a little bit insane. Like, I get, I like 
being able to get things done. and I like it's I can I can be in a situation where I don't have to do art you know but I kind of sort of have to have something else that's happening if that's the case like if I'm going to an event with my friends or family and even then sometimes I'll, I'll bring things to do just in case got a little bit of grass here it's, it's, a, it's a patchy grass it's a patchy dirt road that adds a bit more flavor it's probably like a like you know those um find the duck games this is probably one of those that i'm drawing right now Like where you have to toss a ping pong ball. There's some boo, some shells up here. For like prizes, probably. And on to the next booth. That was a bit shaky, so I'm gonna. Put a curtain here. No, it gets fabric, it's fine. Fabric is a little loosey goosey like that sometimes. Or maybe this is the, the stone shop. Maybe it's a different kind of magic holy shop. The, 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 the magic shops are always the prettiest, too. Like, they have the cool stuff. Or maybe this is like, um... The, the, the fair that I go to, the Renaissance Festival that I go to, has, like, this shop where you can get, like, fake wood weapons. And I really like that. It's one of my favorites in that. So maybe this is what that is. It used to be called the Black Swan Armory when I was a kid, but then it, they changed it something else. I forget what. I like Black Swan Army though. It's more elegant. I think it's like adventures or something or other. Oh, this shelf isn't long enough. Let's, let's fix it. Let's bring it down to the ground. And add a few more lines here. So that that's it. Okay. Ooh, we're going good. Scumbling. Scumble, 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 scumble. Let's, let's do some more scumbling up here. Add some texture. Yeah! looking phenomenal I think well, let's shake it out this would look this part would look terrible in a in a in a in a speed thing in one of those um god I had I had the word earlier Time somethings where it's go where the where it's the footage is going faster. Time lapse. Time lapse. That part where it's where I was shaking it out would look terrible in a time lapse. Maybe we should cut that part out of the time lapse if we make it so we don't have they go rah. That'd be bad. I think I'll leave those lines there. Because there's like shade, right? Big eraser. Doing big eraser things. Time check. 
127. We're making good time. smudges out. Okay. So now I think it's time to hmm. You know, I think maybe the balloon should be one of those props that get put in later. So I'm actually going to erase that. Because then we can like decide where it goes when we decide where the rest of the things go, like the characters and whatnot. And I'm going to erase these cloud lines because I think the clouds will look better if we don't outline them. If we just like Make it part of the, the sky being blue with some white spots in it. This is all looking really good. I think we're almost done with line art. Okay, so let's pull up our pictures again. And I'm gonna pull up this facer again. So that I can see how to make this Ferris wheel. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sign that says we'll be right back. And go to the bathroom and get some water for our water coloring. Oh, pencil, why is your light so long? There we go. <sighs> hmm, maybe I should render. I don't think, like, I, I've just kind of made these booths or little circles for now, but let's 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 add a bit more detail to them. Let's make it a big little top. And then on the bottom we have this like little little basket. Oh, but that would be smaller than that, wouldn't it? Hmm, I think that looks nice. Hmm. Or maybe I should just keep them mobiles. I keep wanting to say what do you guys think, but the, you guys aren't here yet. <laughs> I'm talking to you from the from the past. 
It's a form of time travel, you see. Okay, I think I'm going to just add a bit more detail than I did at first. Instead of doing all the detail, I'm just going to do a little bit. It's like a triangle-y thing and a roundy thing. There we go. Let's make this a little more narrow to, to match the others, to match his friends. It can be fun to like... Like if you're doing a group cosplay or something to 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 do to dress up like your friend together. It's also fun when you each have like your own thing going on though. Like it it she she keeps my girlfriend keeps joking that we never look like we're going to the same event. I think that's fun. I actually think I need to stop looking at this for a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have right here. I think I'll have an actual sign or a graphic or something for this next time. But I need to go to the bathroom. Oh, you can't see that well, can you? Let's let's um let's make a better graphic than that. That's 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 too subtle. Let's grab a piece of paper from another sketchbook. This will work. Or right, let's just have the sketchbook be open right here and have this like just kind of here. And then let's have a big, do I have a big marker? Big marker. Big marker. There we go. And you can, you can, there we go. I'm going to use the restroom. I'm going to get some water. I'm going to be, I'll be right back after these messages, except there aren't any messages. Hold on.
what? Um, parent, dinner with my parents at seven thirty. And if you want to come with me to the haircut, we're leaving at two fifteen. Cool. And I'm back. Hello, everyone. Did you miss me? I don't think anyone is watching right now, but there will be people later, I think, who watch this. Okay. I hope you're getting all this. And Okay, that's the works. Step one, let's erase that message. Because we are right back now. all that progress we've gotten done so far. And let me pull up my references. There we go. Now let's see what we can do about this Ferris wheel. And our time check, 1.39, we're making good time. I'm going to see if I can finish this by 2 or 2.30. I think in order to do that, Hold on. Actually, I'm going to see if I can find a better straight edge than our cr our clamp with. Hmm. And I'm also going to bring a very special guest. This is my punk model, and I'm bringing her here so I can look at her wheels. Put it right there. I'm going to tilt her a bit so that there we go. Yeah. Now I can see what, what kind of thing I'm doing here. And it's good to have a live reference sometimes. then you can see in real because humans we have most of us have depth perception and that changes how we see the world versus how a camera might see the world because cameras usually only have one lens and we have we have two so we can see a lot more than a camera can which can sometimes be frustrating if you're trying to capture something on a camera Okay. Hmm. And I'm going to use this as a straight edge this time. I'm going to use my pencil first just to make sure it'll work. Yeah. It's good to use as many little tricks as you can. Because art can be, oh, sorry, fun. there you are. Art can, art can be hard sometimes. Oh, she wants to be like that. Okay. That's fine. I'm going to leave her there.
So it's good to use as many tricks as you can. And don't be ashamed, you know? There's no shame, there's never any shame in needing tricks or want, needing to learn new things. Because we're always learning, every day. That's just how we work. You know? And I think that's one of the main things about TB's adventures is that he's always learning new things every day. And he's always, like, sometimes it's hard to deal with the fact that you don't know everything. And that's fine, you know, you, can, you just gotta, we're growing. And like, you know, every, every show for kids is kind of a little bit about that. But I think that grown-ups should, should learn that too. That it's okay to admit that you don't know everything. That it's okay, that it's good and it's good even to let yourself learn new things. You're always growing and changing and seeing the world in slightly different ways every day. Because we meet people. And we learn things and we experience the world. And look how there's a different, the weather's a little bit different every day. People are a little bit different too. With me, I'm learning that this is too much this way. It should go this way more. Oh, that should probably be a bit higher. And see, I'm changing the shape of my thing because I realized, wait a minute, this goes here. And this goes here. The shape of it is different than I expected it to be. That's good. You're learning. I'm learning anyway. I hope you're learning something too from all this. Okay. okay. There's my favorite through line. Yay! He's got, and I think we're almost ready to start watercoloring because I've lined everything except for my Ferris wheel. Now it's time to <laughs> give the Ferris wheel some ink. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. 
And this one's going out of frame, so we don't need to draw the little guy over there. I think this Ferris wheel might be turning out a little bit sloppy. <laughs> That's okay. We'll figure it out. I'm just so eager to get to the actual watercolor stage of this process. And maybe being a little too excited about it, maybe rushing a bit. Because we're so close, you guys. Okay, and now for the circle part of it. This is going to be a bit tricky. Oh, oh, we're doing it. We're making this happen. Huzzah! We've got a Ferris wheel. Now for the inner wheel. Well, that's a bit messed up. That's okay. It, I probably shouldn't have drawn that part. <laughs> hmm. Maybe there's a way to fix it. Maybe if we were like... Add a detail here. Looks a bit more Ferris wheel -er.
Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I'm not sure this so it's faded a bit. sure that we get any spare stray pencil lines. Okay, time check. 154, we can do this, you guys. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the stream here and then come back tomorrow and next time we're going to watercolor it. So see you tomorrow for part two.